Hey everybody, it's Aubrey here. Depending on where you live, you might have been impacted from the smoke from the Western wildfires like we have been here in Boulder, Colorado. And I don't know about you, but seeing how much the smoke has dirtied the air has made me really interested in air composition in general. The cool thing is, is that we've just released five new MQ gas sensors. So if you're interested in learning about the air quality around you, it's super easy. Let's check them out. The MQ series of gas sensors uses a small heater inside with an electrochemical sensor to determine whether a specific gas is present in the air. We already carry the MQ3, which is the alcohol gas sensor, the MQ7, the carbon monoxide sensor, the MQ4, which is the methane CNG gas sensor, the MQ6, the LPG gas sensor, and the MQ8, the hydrogen gas sensor. Now we've added an ammonia gas sensor, a hydrogen sulfide gas sensor, a low concentration ozone gas sensor, a smoke sensor, and a dual gas carbon monoxide methane detection sensor. The MQ2 smoke sensor can detect flammable gas in any range from 300 to 10,000 parts per million, and the heater uses five volts. The MQ9B sensor's conductivity gets higher as the carbon monoxide and methane gas concentrations rise. The heater uses an alternating voltage of five volts and 1.5 volts, depending on the gases. If you're only testing carbon monoxide, the heater can be set to 1.5 volts. It has a sensing range of 10 to 500 parts per million for methane. The low concentration ozone gas sensor is highly sensitive to ozone, also known as trioxygen, and oxides like chlorine and nitrogen dioxide. Its sensing range is 10 to 1,000 parts per billion, and the heater uses 6 volts. The load resistor for this sensor is a lot higher than other sensors, and it's incredibly sensitive. It measures in parts per billion rather than parts per million. MQ136 and MQ137 both have heaters that use 5 volts. MQ136 senses hydrogen sulfide and MQ137 senses ammonia. Each of these sensors needs to be calibrated in order to get accurate readings, and the process is pretty translatable across all the sensors. First, it's important to plug it into a power supply and let it preheat for 24 to 48 hours. These sensors get gas concentrations based off of resistance ratio, so you'll need to get a fixed value for the sensor resistance in order to calibrate it. It's easy to do this through Arduino with the following code. It averages from 100 data points such that there is a stable value and then measures the sensor voltage, which helps determine the sensor resistance. Here at SparkFun, we use these sensors in conjunction with the gas sensor breakout PCB board, which is sold separately. Once soldered to the sensor, like we've done here, these allow you to utilize oddly spaced pins and thus use multiple gas sensors within a small amount of space. It's actually serendipitous that we released these new MQ sensors this week because a couple days ago, my carbon monoxide detector in my house started alarming and my smoke detector had low battery at the same time. And it was such a weird situation that I decided to pick up the MQ9B to see if the carbon monoxide detector was faulty. It ended up that it was. And if something like that happens to you, you can make sure to pick up one or all of these at sparkfun.com and get hacking today. To, yeah, I'm just way off script. Hey, are you? I'm just totally ad living. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sensors that can help you figure that out. We'll just end it there, I guess. Sure. Try it again. I don't know. Wow. Let's give it another go. Great. If we're gonna finish that better, I don't know how to end that. That's my story for today. You're welcome. <laughs>